Hi guys, welcome back to this channel Fitted Technologies now with me Dito. So in this tutorial today I'm going to show you how to model a simple tensile test with notch. So there's a tensile specimen with notch and then there's like a sharp crack and we're going to model the sharp crack by using a seam crack in Abacus they call it seam crack and then we are going to calculate the fracture toughness or not not fracture toughness because fracture toughness is a material property we want to calculate the stress intensity factor and then we want to compare with the critical stress intensity factor from the experimental data so imagine now that you have a specimen with a certain dimension and then you before you do the test using instrument machine or any kind of tensile test machine you want to check how much load that is required to extend the crack right so here let me show you first we're going to model these metals yep. we are going to model these metals uh, with the K1C50 which means that under mode 1 uh, the crack will extend when when the stress intensity factor reaches 50 MPa meter square root okay uh, so uh, let's do it so in, in this tutorial I'm going to use this dimension so there are many types of dimension you can use here I'm going to use millimeters second newton megapascal so my energy will be newton in millimeters so if you if you see this uh, the material properties in mpa and meter square root so we need to change this later because we are going to use millimeters in our simulation while the material properties is in the meter okay is in meter okay all right so let's open abacus now uh, okay. <laughs> or maybe Abacus. Yeah, let's open Abacus CAE here. Yeah, you click here and what we need to do is first uh, change the di directory to a uh, pre prescribed uh, folder which is why, why I forgot <laughs> I might be too old for this now uh, <laughs> usually there's a change di a set work directory here okay and then you can click uh youtube okay so now everything is in this folder okay if we save uh k1c okay and then it should be there all right nice okay now let's make uh, some part uh, using 3d solid extrusion and the size of the part is 20 millimeters in width and 100 meters height and then it's like that okay or maybe it's too high uh let's fix this guy first so it stays there and then we change the dimension by using this one click here and you click here so the dimension will be 50 okay it's much better now done or not done let's modify something here so basically there will be a notch here this big it's just a random random geometry if you have your experimental uh specimen dimension you can put it there but for the sake of this video i just I will just make it uh, a bit uh, arbitrary okay and then we are going to remove this guy okay so there's kind of notch 
and then there will be like a a crack here with this I'm not sure I can do that here yeah it should be a close uh, close loop so I need to delete this I think okay and then click here and click done and then the depth will be five is enough right five millimeters so this is our specimen but we need to add some notes i uh, know we need to add some uh crack there right because we want to simulate that so the way you do it is basically you need to draw a line here partition face using sketch so we're going to make a sketch to make the crack so this click this surface click done and then select an edge or axis that will appear vertical and on the right side so this is will be on my right okay and then you click here because you want to create the lines so the the line will go from this edge to here okay and then you click done so but um, because we are using partition face so it will only make partition to one face uh, in, in our case we want to make a, a true thickness crack right so what you need to do is to extend this crack through the thickness how you do it is basically uh, you need to make partition and click this one maybe or maybe this one partition cell using extrude or sweep edges so you will sweep this this edge click here uh is that right uh yeah click done and then you will extrude and then select this one because it's the true thickness direction right and then you click ok create partition and done now you can check that this guy is now is true thickness right and then the second part that we will do is basically create the materials the materials is the, in this case we will just assume everything elastic with the standard material properties for uh, steel usually 200 MPa so it's now we, we, we write it as a 200,000 MPa so usually it's two, 200 GPa so we, we write it as 200,000 MPa and the Poisson ratio will be 0 0.3 that's it and then homogeneous because they are homogeneous and then they're solid click and okay and then you click here and then you click this cell you assign them and then using section one with solid struct solid type and material material one which is we just created before and the next is assembly and you can create instance all right um, and make sure when we want to make a sim crack it has to be independent because as is the structure is one union so there is no actual crack there actually even we make partition but uh, when we mesh it they will have a shared node so they are actually connected so what we are going to do later is basically we are we will assign a sim crack so when we mess it the abacus will not share the notes so even though they are like touching each other they will create two different notes so they can separate okay that's how the sim cry uh, is used so in this case to do that you need to use independent okay so make sure you choose independent because you will modify the geometry later okay okay and create step this is very standard you use static general uh, okay there's nothing to change because we will not simulate the progression we will just want to check with these configurations the load that we apply will will, will it make an additional crack extension or not so we just want to evaluate whether the crack will extend or not by comparing the stress intensity factors due to the loading to the critical stress intensity factors based on the experimental data okay 
So there's no crack evolution here. Uh, so we don't need to make some kind of stabilization as in the my previous video where we did a cohesive element simulation there where we have a lot of damage in, in the cohesive area in this case we don't need to do that i think and uh let me check I and mean, this is standard i don't like this kind of uh, frequency output usually i'm using even the space time interval i'm using 100 like in my other videos it's always good to, to turn on iPhone and chord just in case later you need a coordinate of a specific node in the deform uh, configuration. You can check it and then the volume of each element. And that, that, that's just my, uh, my habit. Just in case I need it later, I don't need to rerun again just for this specific output. Okay, and then H. I also make it the same thing. So this should be 100. Okay. And then you can create another one. There should be a crack here, okay? So crack, so you can create history for the crack, but now it's empty because you haven't made the crack. So you need to make the crack and then return again later, okay? To this section, to this module. First, we make interactions. So the crack is in the interaction model module, okay? So the feature, no, it's a special here. There's a crack. So you assign a seam crack. So you're by assigning seam crack, you're telling that this area actually a crack from the beginning. They can separate. So when you mess it, abacus. So abacus, when you mess it, don't don't make a share node between these two faces. Separate them, okay? That's that's what is happening when you assign a seam crack. Okay. Okay, so done. There's a seam crack now. Then, uh, when you want to model this, uh, how you call it, uh, uh, stress intensity factor, you need to tell the abacus where is the crack tip that you want to analyze. So, in this case, the crack tip that I want to analyze is this one. Uh, let me create a special crack and create. So there are so many ways to model the crack. There could be using contour integral. So you make a integration over the contour to calculate the energy release rate, and with some relation you can uh, you can resolve the stress intensity factor. You can also use XFEM or even VCCT virtual crack closure techniques okay uh, okay and then you choose your 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 crack the crack front okay but the problem is that you cannot choose this line here all right so what you need to do is to do here render wire wire frame okay and then you can create you can see clearly the this crack tip okay uh, and then you choose it and then you click done so the abacus will ask you to choose the normal to the crack plane so basically you need to choose this direction normal to the crack plane uh, in this case you can choose this line because this is normal to the crack plane or you can specify the direction of the crack itself in this case i prefer to use the key factors which is the crack uh, direction itself so uh the crack will be from here to here. That is the direction, right? So this is the key factor. So it's pointing down there. So when they want to propagate, that is the possible uh, crack extension. Okay, now it's done. And now we need to come back again to the, where was it? The step, I think, yeah, the history. And then you create another history. You need to create the continue. And then you need to do where is it the crack you choose the crack because we only create one crack right so there is a crack one and then you want to even the space-time interval 100 and then you can use it using stress intensity factor uh, we're going to use uh, there are so many crack initiation criteria uh, I'm going to use this one maybe 
I can use the J integral. Of, let, let, let's see. Let's see. Missing values. Number of contour. There's three or one. So you can put any number you like. Okay. So basically, uh, when the abacus did this, uh, how do you call it? Uh, this integration, contour integration, they can do it like this. They can do it bigger. They can do it bigger again. So basically, uh, you need to choose the values that stabilize at some point. That is the value that we are going to use. But let's see how it works. Uh, we, we assign the crack. We, we make the history for the crack. And then the loading. Uh, so we are going to fix the the lower part like in the experimental so we clamp them so u1 u2 u3 zero while this one you can make it zero or just leave it as is because in solid elements the translate no the rotation is not does not the rotation are not exist okay so they're not important okay they will not use ur1 ur2 ur3 just for the classical solid element for some uh, for, for some advanced solid element they have this what they call drilling rotation that's another story okay but for a classical solid element generally speaking there is no rotational degree of freedom the rotational degree of freedom is just for uh 2d problems plane stress plane strain or uh for shell elements where they have this rotation okay even for 2D, they don't have, or they might have, they might have, okay. Okay, and then you choose the, imagine you did the same thing, but now you want to put it two millimeters away. So it's, a, or I don't know, maybe one millimeters away. Do you think it's big enough to make a crack extent? Let's see. Okay, that's the loading now the mesh. Let's do the mesh and then create I put one. Okay, that's approximate global size. Let's make it 0 0.5. Let's make it smaller. I just fixed my computer. It's a it's an old computer, but it's, it's a quite good computer back then. <laughs> Uh, in 2013, I, I bought this computer for like $2,000. It's uh, uh, with quad core and so on. So now let's try. I also overclock this computer. So let's make a smaller elements. And let's make a local refinement. So the contour integral is accurate if we use this. So I want more. I want more like 20 and double no single so we flip the direction so as the elements close to the crack front they will be smaller okay that's the meaning of bias so if not they will be like a evenly spaced uh, you don't want that right because you want to make sure you capture the stress gradient near the crack tip so that the calculation is accurate uh, okay and then you click okay you delete the mess you see here this is the approximate uh, size okay nice okay so now we assign this uh read disintegration 3d stress second order accuracy i use enhance hourglass control so they don't easily uh, trigger the uh, uh, hourglass mode and I think it's it's done right property done assembly done step done interaction done load done mesh done and then you job you create a job continue yeah, I will just use the four cores because it's a small model okay precision not a lot for full click OK and we click submit hopefully there's nothing wrong with the simulation and it should be quick it should be quick because now i have a better computer last time i used my laptop that's why 
every time I run I need to stop the video and then wait but this one supposed to be quick supposed to be this is my first time trying this so I hope you guys enjoy this video if you really like this video please subscribe like and share this channel to your friends especially for those for example who start to do their uh, undergraduate project uh, maybe they need to do some kind of simulations in abacus and they would like to know how to use abacus from the beginning watch my channel because i upload a lot of video that is not really low quality i mean i i i upload videos that has meaningful learning experience in in there just not not just like uploading things right for example this one here i teach about how to model seam crack and then to find out how to calculate the stress intensity factor in many videos i also do the same kind of novelty uh, that can bring new knowledge to you so let's see oh it's still running Uh, let's see. Okay, guys, still running. Let's monitor now. Yeah, it's zero point three four. Yeah, it's pretty quick. And yep. So if you have time, guys, you can check like this one where was it i think it's in the interaction right uh because there are so many uh so many options here in in the crack when you create a crack you can have xfem that's how you model using xfem so the crack will extend i think it will be uh, my topics for the next videos i want to model this using 2d and 3d and xfem because many people want to xfem want to use xfem and i'm going to also test the physicity but not for this kind of test maybe like a dcb test or a enf test and notch flexural test this kind of test that you usually use for testing composite materials all right all right let's check 0.67 not too fast but okay let's check now my uh, my performance oh my cpu is 3.4 but now it's the speed is 4.2 gigahertz yeah this is the original speed so i overclocked it okay so this is what i'm trying want to say now it's 80 85 percent finished so you can check it in the message file And then you, you go here. Uh, it's not finished yet. Yeah. Maybe it's not yet finished. Uh, did I make it? Yeah, here, done. Here I have a second output, history output. It should be fine. I just need to wait it now it's complete you can create the result so this is the result guys so if you can click here uh, so there the crack extend if you can animate it it's really nice it's really nice and now my computer is a good one so oh nice so now we can check what is the stress intensity factors there uh, you can go to the job monitor and there should be a a1c here i don't get it maybe in status file or data file oh yeah in data file you see here there's k1 k2 and k3 so this is for, from the last one. So we checked the last one, right? So the K1 is 1,476, 
this is the first contour this is the second contour this is the third contour so let's make it uh, so depending on the contour uh, your strength intensity factor might uh, change a little bit so for the sake of safety imagine if you want to check whether the crack extend or not let's choose the highest one the highest one is somewhere around 20,000 right 20,000 or 21,000 right around 21,000 MPA so it's a simulation 21,000 MPA uh, meter no millimeter uh, 0 0.5 while this guy is 50 the critical stress intensity factor is 50 mpa meter so how you change this guy uh, or this is equivalent to 1000 0.5 millimeter right so so what is it then 0.5 is 31.6 it's and then times times 50 it's 1581 1581 mpa and mpa millimeter 0.5 which is much much higher than this one there so there's no crack extension just by pulling one millimeter so one millimeter is not big enough is it, is that correct no it's twenty one thousand right two ten to oh so it's already cracked twenty one thousand it's already cracked yeah so if you want to that's by pulling one millimeter rating right let's check again the displacement that's the so basically you give one millimeter and that's way too much to extend the crack the crack already extend so if you want to check that's 100 percent of the loading and i mean this one is from the last step right so time increment 100 increment 100 means this last one which is one millimeter displacement now you want to check when the cracks start to appear so the cracks start to appear when this guy is the same like this guy right uh 21000 so you need to reduce it to 181581 so let's find when the 1581 it's 8000 now okay One five eighty one. I think it's the last one. Yeah, here, here it's not cracked yet because it's still one thousand three hundred. But here it's already cracked. It's in the boundary. So basically, you just need eight increment out of hundred increment. So displacement need displacement required to extend the crack is increment out of 100 increment from the total displacement of one millimeter which is i don't know 0 0.08 millimeter that is the displacement actually you need to extend the crack okay so if you simulate with one millimeter the crack already extended guys so i hope it's useful for you you can put your uh, geometry there if you want to design your experiment this is how you calculate stress intensity factors because here i only have the data for stress intensity factors uh for steel for the steel in k1c in some specific cases 
you will have G1C, the fracture toughness, the energy release rate, critical energy release rate. In that case, uh, you can change this guy, uh, the feature, uh, where was it? If you have, wait, I'll turn it over. So let me retry again. Let me show what I want to say. Okay. So, where was it? Uh, why I forgot. There is a place where you have this one. I think it's in step. Was it here? Yeah. So if you want to compare with the fracture toughness G1C, the one that you need to output is the J integral. Okay. But in, in, in our case, in this video, we have data about uh, on K1C, stress intensity factor, critical stress intensity factor. That's why I requested this one. You can also uh, test many different types of uh, crack initiation criteria. So I hope this video will be useful for you guys. And if it's useful, please don't forget to subscribe and share and let your friend knows about this channel. And yeah let this channel grows thank you very much uh goodbye